So then, we are back with the modern understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services, where we find in the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Itzayelic lineage and also from the Holy Koran. So then we can understand the time of the end. And then regarding Yerushiahu the prophet, he was then a very neutral prophet because he was the spokesperson of the Creator. And understandably, he also included the influence of the first son in the plan of the future. So let's understand Yerushiahu, Yermiahu, Ezekiel, those prophets of old, they were engaged in writing the truth. Later, when the Hebrews began to be sinful, they began to change the meaning of the holy instructions on their own. But let's understand and rescue the original meaning of the documents when they were spoken from the Creator Himself. So let's understand this point. Starting then with Ibrahim, we understand he had a covenant with the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Let's understand then what went on. Ibrahim then, when he left Ur, he was then set himself on a pilgrimage where he was not sure where he was going, but he was obedient. Then he went to the land, and then there, there was a situation where then there was a famine at some point. Then, since his wife at the time he could not bear children, then because of the famine, he went to Egypt. So let's understand how Ibrahim was able to gather some riches first. We are not talking about religion, neither tabernacle. We are talking simply regarding the normal factor of life. Work and then a person has riches. So then he went to Egypt and he said that his wife was then his sister. In truth she was. She was his half-sister. But he used the understanding for his own gain. Then in exchange for his wife, half a sister, he received the camels, he received many kinds of riches in exchange for her. But then the problem was the Creator had intervened. And he did. So then Pharaoh at the time said, what is this? And then he was sent out with his wife, half a sister, and he went out with much riches. After he left Egypt, and then obviously Hagar came along because she was a servant, then Ibrahim had to face the local war. There was a spirit of control of the area where Ibrahim was at after he left Egypt. He want to sit down over there. He want to have himself a time for him and his family. He had to face the spirit of the war of the region. Himself as the general, he fought against the local army and he won. Then came Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a king and priest of the region. Congratulate him for what he did. Then he had the understanding of the Creator via Melchizedek. From there, then, Ibrahim established himself, and he had a son with Hagar. His name was Ishmael. Ishmael then was brought as a king. Why do we understand he was brought up as a king? So let's understand what Ibrahim had. He had a name, he had a reputation, he won the war, he had authority, and he had much riches. So what's the understanding? Since tabernacling was not available yet, but then Ibrahim had an idea of who Melchizedek was, he established his first son as a traitor. He was then a person, a king, where then, when he became an adult, then Ishmael opened up his own trade company. He had the inheritance from his father, much riches. He had his name, he had his influence, 
he started his own trade company. Then when the boy was then grown up, he had his company. Then Ibrahim and his wife, Sarah, then they went on their pilgrimage. There they went. You know, and then later they had the second son. So then, let's try to understand when we read, for instance, Yerushiah, the 62nd chapter. When you find the sons of Ibrahim from the Ishmaelic lineage, you find then the turban, turban and the golden turban. Those are the sons of Yishmael. How do we layer this 62nd chapter, for instance, with a layer of Ezekiel? Because Ezekiel and Yerushiah, they were not living at the same time period. But then the layer of understanding is in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. Then you find those two sticks, the authority given, first son, trade. The second stick, tabernacle. So the Creator then, during this time of restoration, He did what is obvious. He's restoring then the trade belongs to Ishmaelites. How do we find this being so certain? When Joseph was sold into slavery, he was sold into the caravan of the Ishmaelites. So Ishmael was a tradesperson. He started out as a king. He had the name of his father, the name of Ibrahim upon him, and he was a king from the start. He started his own trade company. He was extremely wealthy. So then when we understand what this means in the 62nd chapter of Yerushiah, then the turban, the golden turban, turban are used then by the Ishmaelites, not by the Yitzhaelic people. Hebrews, they use a veil. How do we have this certainty? Very simple. When Ronald found the chamber, where then Yermiah, the prophet, had then the articles from the temple, they were then, during the time of the invasion of the Babylonians, was then installed and sealed for roughly 500 years. Then we have to understand, when Ronald found the chamber, there were no priestly garments. You know what this means? Those priestly garments were invented because the Creator had saved only the articles required for the Second Tabernacle Services time of restoration. How do we clear the instructions? We understand the inventory of what was found in the chamber. When the inventory is then compared with the scripture, we can clear away any other invention of these scoundrels of Hebrews. What was the priestly garment? The Messiah used it. It was a simple pair of sandals, a piece of cloth with a belt around the waist, and then obviously a veil in front of the face. The simplest there was no stones and an ephod and twelve tribes in each of them with these nanya. Those were absolutely concocted crazy ideas of the Hebrews. If those garments were so significant, then Rona would have then find it and found it in a chamber. Those were never found. It's not relevant. So the turban in the 62nd belongs to the sons of Yishmael. Then we observe the world obviously going through a transitional time because we have come out of the thousand years of deceit. The restoration is being granted. So then we find the kingdom of the East, China, pure trade. When you hear of China, you don't hear of religion, you hear of trade. Precisely what the Creator wants. 
we find the kingdom of the north filtering through any other kind of a religion. False Christianity, you name any other religion, it's filtered through the kingdom of the north because they are very tough. They can filter through crap and get pure trade. Then pure trade is given then to China. Pure trade. And you find the kingdom of the south obviously with the raw materials. Thus the starting of the engine of the world's market trade. Then per IMF prediction, we have 36 months until our monetary system gets ruined. Thus far we are printing so much it's not going to last for very long. Then when the Chinese system pure trade becomes available, then the worldwide market starts. Shortly after, then the Ishmaelites, they have the whole market for themselves. Because they have the most crude. Thus, then the first stick restored, and the second stick then, the Hebrews must restart the services. First service is going to be in the land of Cush. So then, Yishmael was never thrown out of the tent. It was invented. The jealous, egotistical Hebrews, they changed the holy instructions. There is no garment of the priest with a turban and ephod of so many stones and blah 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 doesn't exist. The inventory of the chamber gives you what should be used in the time of the restoration. And garments were never found. So those were invented and concocted. They used the simplest garment you can ever imagine. A simple cloth around the body with a leather belt, regular sandals, leather shoes, and a veil on their heads. Very simple. If those garments have any significance whatsoever, you would have found during the inventory. It was never found. So the Hebrews then, because the first son were so influential, they had caravans, and then they were kings, and then the Hebrews had nothing. But they had the covenant related with the Messiah that would come in the future, but it wasn't enough. You know what they did? They changed the holy instructions for their own use. Now do you understand Takanot Masim? The inventory of the chamber shows you what is relevant for the continuation of the tabernacling services. Garments are not there. The Messiah gave the example. He had one piece cloth around his body, then a leather belt, leather shoes, and then, obviously, he had a veil over his head. That's how the priests used to be. And then there was only once the sprinkling of the dam over the holy seat. There was no first, second, and third time. Only once. These Hebrews are liars and scoundrels. And we have to filter through the instructions because we have the inventory. There is no record of priestly garments. Those were invented because the first son was so rich and the second son then was so envious. Then they changed the garment. Oh, because you know, you have these stone. Then you know, it's for this tribe and the other stone. And then you mix religion, made a novel out of an entire religion with riches. So we have to filter through the entire scripture 
And understand, the first son started out as a king. King Ishmael. And he started out as with a company. A freighter company. So when you read then Genesis later or Bereshit, you understand. Then Joseph was sold into slavery and he was sold to a caravan of the Ishmaelites. They had a company. Obviously, Ibrahim was very rich, very influential, had a name, started out as a kingdom. Then we find at this end of time, time of the restoration, later then, the entire world's market or trade of the world being given to their hands. Thus, then, unification of both sticks makes the whole of the anointing. <coughs> 